Hello, my second graders, friends. Today, this is like a makeup for um, when you had a holiday, all right? So it's like a regular music class. You don't have to interact and do what I ask you to do, okay? And I'll give you some space to do that. You're gonna need your whiteboard and your markers, so get it out, get it ready for you, okay? Or your paper and a pencil. And today, I'll start off with a greeting. It's gonna sound like this. If I go, Hello, how are you? And you're gonna to have to match me. But something about it is I'm gonna use these two sounds. So and me, the very first two sounds that we started back in first grade. So is higher, me is lower, and it's a skip. So be my echo first. Hello, how are you? And here's the beat. Hello, how are you? Did you hear the rhythm? It went, hello, how are you? You're echoing me. Hello, how are you? Can you sing it with rhythm syllables? What did it start with? Here we go. And you sing it with rhythm syllables. Hello, how are you? Did you do ta di ta di ta Good. How about the melody? What did I start with? So or me, here we go. Hello, how are you? Okay, what did I start with? Which one? This one or this one? Show me. It's this one. And you go, hello, how are you? It was, hello, how are you? So the answer is, so, 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 me. And then there was a rest right there. Ready? It's right, that's how it goes. All right, let's warm up our head voice. It's very important that you know how to sing and you know how to match the pitch and sing in your head voice. So just go like this, go, ooh. Do that a few times, just warm up your head voice. Ooh. See if you can match this pitch and go, me in your head voice. Very good. Let's do this one here. All right, let's do this one. You notice that each time I take a big breath and just let the air out, my eyebrows go up. My eyebrows go up. Do that. All right, good. Let's do an echo song. Here's one that we did at the beginning of the school year. It's called Bill Grogan's goat, right? I sing and you sing after me, all right? The one that goes, there was a man. Now please take note. There was a man who had a goat. He loved that goat. Indeed he did. He loved that goat just like a kid. Kid is a baby goat, so let's play on words. So here I go. There was a man. Now please take note. There was a man who had a goat. He loved that goat. Indeed he did. He loved that goat just like a kid. Now the second part goes like this. One day that goat felt frisk and fine, full of energy. He ate three red shirts right off the line. The man, he grabbed him by the back and tied him to the railroad track. Goes, one day that goat felt frisk and fine, ate three red shirts right off the line. The man he grabbed him by the back and tied him to the railroad track. Here comes the last one. And when that train came into sight, the goat grew pale and green with fright. He heaved a sigh as if in pain, coughed up those shirts and flag the train. So each time, I want to half step higher. Start here, and 
then I went up a half step higher, and that little half step higher. And when that train came into sight, the goat grew pale and green with fright. He heaved a sigh as if in pain, cupped up those shirts and flagged that train. All right. Did you say the goat grew pale? That's a tongue twister. Some people say the groat grew pale, right? The goat. All right. So singing is very important. You know how to match me and sing in tune because then you're ready to learn other things like solfege and be able to do all that. Now, you know what else is important is being able to keep the beat, right? We've been doing that since kindergarten. I can keep the beat, 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 keep the beat. Right, if I sing seesaw and keep the beat. Seesaw, up and down, in the sky and on the ground. All right, take out your whiteboards and your markers. You ready? Give you a couple seconds to get ready. How about you just write the beat for seesaw. It's gonna get warmed up with writing the beat. This is pretty simple, simple for you guys, right? Remember, just a line, 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 line. See if you can do it all in one line right here. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Seesaw, up and down, in the sky and on the ground. How many beats did you get? Count your beats. Did you get eight? I got eight. This is how you check it. Look at it. Here I go, seesaw, up and down, in the sky and on the ground. All right, did you feel where the accents are? When I sing the song, some beats are stronger, the way I say the words. See, that first one, let's put an accent right there, because this is now second grade. In second grade, we learned about accents. And you know where the other ones are? I'll sing it, and you write down where the accents are. See, so up and down, in the sky and on the ground. Let's see if you wrote it this way. See, so up. I heard it there. Seesaw, up and down, in the sky and on the ground. Well, we created this pattern of strong beat, weak beat, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, and weak. And when we count the beats, now we, we count them in groups of one and then two. The accent is always one, two, one, Two, one, two, okay? So now, put it down for a second here, put this down. So right now, we did the beat. So if you sing the song, keep the beat, this is what I mean. Ready, go, seesaw, up and down, in the sky and on the ground. And since you know about accents, let's keep the beat this way. Strong and weak, strong and weak. Ready, go, seesaw, up and down, in the sky and on the ground. Well, if the beats are grouped in two, you know how to conduct in two. Do you remember the pattern? It went like this. You went press and then lift. That was it, over and over again. Ready, go, press, lift, press, lift. One, two, ready, sing, seesaw, up and down. Hope you were singing it and you were singing the ending. All right. Now, how about you guys, since you guys are second graders, let's go back to this. Uh, will you write down the rhythm of this song? Because the whole song, all he's using is ta and toddies. That's it, right? See, saw, up and down, in the sky and on the ground. I'll give you a minute and see if you got it. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll write it down too.
right, time's up. Okay, let's compare. This is the rhythm I got. It went ta 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 di ta ta di ta di ta di ta. This should be simple for you, right? Now that the beats are grouped in two, we could put a time signature at the beginning of the song. And a time signature, it looks like this is a big two. If you have room, hopefully you do. And upside down two, upside down ta. And this tells us that the beats are grouped in two, and that's our beat. Now we can put bar lines in. One, two, bar line, right? There's two beats in that one. One, two, bar line. All right, the first beat is accented, right? And then the next one, one, two, bar line, one, two, double bar line. And here it is. Here it is. Now, let's clap the rhythm and sing the song. Here we go. Okay, here I go. I'll start off and you finish it. Ready, go. Seesaw up and down. This time you start. Are you clapping the rhythm? And I will finish it. One, two, ready, go. In the sky and on the ground. Now, when you know a song well enough, you can do the radio game with it, right? You sing the whole song like this. One, two. That means, hold on, don't sing, and then you sing. When I mean don't sing, hear it in your head. One, two, ready, go. Up and down. On the ground. I was hearing the whole song in my head like that. Okay. All right. Let's do another song. How about we do Teddy Bear? And just for fun, before we write anything, you can erase this. Okay. Put the cat back on. But first thing I want you to do is, you know this song. How about you stand up and you're going to do the motions of Teddy Bear. If I say turn around, then you turn around. Say touch the ground, touch the ground. Show your shoes. And that will do, and you bow. All right, let's sing. So I'll sing the song, and then you can do the motions. Now, what can you do for teddy bear? Some people like to do teddy bear, teddy bear. You can do that, or make up your own thing. One, two, ready, go. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. Teddy bear, teddy bear, show your shoes. Teddy bear, teddy bear, that will do. And you just like bow. Second part, remember teddy bear, you go upstairs, you say your prayers, turn off the light, say good night. Here we go. One, two, here I go. Teddy bear, teddy bear, go upstairs. Teddy bear, teddy bear, say your prayers. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn off the light. Teddy bear, teddy bear, say good night. Good night. All right, go ahead and sit down. And I want you to think about this song, and I'll keep the beat. How do you feel the beats grouped? Twos, threes, or fours, because we know those, right? So here we go. Here's the first part. I'll just keep the beat and see if you can feel the first accent. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. Teddy bear, teddy bear, show your shoes. Teddy bear, teddy bear, that will do. That's the first one, right away, one. Okay, where's the next one? Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn. Did you hear him turn? I heard turn. So, teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. So, I think I heard it in four, one. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Now, somebody might hear, teddy bear, and might hear another one right here. There is an accent there. Because four and two are very similar. So if you said two or you said four, I would accept both of them, okay? But let's do it in four, just for fun, all right? And we'll do it like this. We'll go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and we'll do it this way. You guys sing, 
teddy bear, teddy bear, and I'll answer you, all right? So make sure that you do your part, okay? You're gonna start with teddy bear, ready? One, and you're gonna go one, two, three, four. See if you can do it together with me, okay? One, two, ready, go. Turn around. Touch the ground. Show your shoes. That will do. All right, let's review. How do you conduct in four? Conducting, it starts the same way. Every pattern starts with press, because that's beat number one. That's the accent. After you do like this, press, well, come. Well, I think it went like this, press, hug, welcome, lift. That was it, press, hug, welcome, lift. Press, hug, welcome, lift. Make sure you can do that and practice this pattern, right? Press, hug, well, now count. One, two, three, four. We're a little bit faster. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, stop. Now can you sing the song and conduct? Yeah? All right, let's do the same way. Let's do it in this pitch. There's your pitch, you sing teddy bear, teddy bear. You get four beats, and then I will answer you with part two, go upstairs. You ready? One, two, ready, go. Go upstairs. Say your prayers. Turn off the light. Say good night. And that was the end of that one. That was for Tom Meter. Okay. Now, I'm thinking of this song. I'll do another song and so you can tell me. How do you feel the beats grouped? Twos, threes, or fours. All right. And this is the song. It goes like this. And this is my beat. It's called Winter Goodbye. Winter goodbye, blue is the sky. You can't stay round this place. Groundhog has shown his face. Winter goodbye, blue is the sky. What's your answer? Two, three. Four. Let's see. Does it start right away with the accent? It sure does. Winter goodbye. I heard win. And the next one I went, winter goodbye. On the word bye, right where it started. Winter goodbye. Can you get it, take out your whiteboard and your marker and write that? Let's see how many beats it is. Make sure it's nice and clean. Just that first sentence, right? We went, winter goodbye. Ready to write it? One, two, go. Winter goodbye. All right, check your beats and I'll clap it. One, two, go. Winter goodbye. Did you get six like me? One, two, go. Winter, goodbye. All right, let's mark the accents. First one, on, win. Winter, goodbye. Let's count it. This is number one, two, three. Accent is always number one in our pattern. Beats are grouped in three. So let's write a time signature, big one. Three, and our beat is ta, three ta meter. Okay, now let's put the bar line where it belongs. One, two, three, bar line. One, two, three, bar line. See if we can see the three beats in this. Now, 
If I write the rhythm down, right? Let's say I make in the first measure I hear when I hear ta, ter, and here I hear that winter good. Bye. Well, let's see. Let me write this down. Three beats like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tie them together. Because I heard me sing bye and hold it for three beats. Bye. So here's the beginning. Winter good bye. It's a three beat note. You know what? That's too much writing. Here's another way I could write three beats. Underneath it, I'm gonna draw a two beat note. So that's two beats and a one beat note like this. And I'm gonna tie it together. Hey, that's three beats, right? Winter goodbye. But let me show you another way that musicians do it. What they do is, see if you can see this right here, they put a two beat note like that, and they put a dot next to it. All right, kind of hard to see that. So that is our three beat note. So those who take piano lessons know it's called a dotted half note. I'll call it a dotted two beat note. And so what that dot really means, this is something new, it doesn't mean add a beat, even though it makes sense here. It looks like it says it means just add a beat. But what that dot really means is add half of its value to the note. For instance, I'm gonna erase this and show you what I mean so you can see it better, okay? So here it is, I'm gonna draw it again. The two beat note with the dot. Okay, so without the dot, it is worth two beats, right? Without the dot, it's worth two beats. Now, that dot says add half of its value. Well, what is it valued at? Well, it's valued at two beats. Okay, that's the two beat note, two beats. What's half of two? One. So you add that to it, so you add another beat to it, and it becomes this, okay? Just so you know, that's what that means. All right, for instance, let me give you another one. Let's say, do you remember this one here? Uh, the one, I think it was this we learned. It was, um, they call it the whole note. We call it the four beat note, right? Because we said it was four beats long. This is the one that goes, ta. Now, what if somebody says they have a four beat note and they put a dot next to it? Well, how many beats is it now? What's your answer? Mm -hmm. Now, you know what happens? Most people say, hey, it's five beats. And then I'll say, no, it doesn't mean add a beat. You know what that dot means? It means add half of its value. Well, here it's valued at four. Okay, that's the value of this. What's half of four? Oh, two, add two beats. So it's one, two, three, four, plus half of its value, one, two. It is six beats long if you ever have one of these later on in your life. Okay, so that's what that dot really means. It means add half of its value to that note. Okay, now, so let us conduct in three. Remember how to conduct in three? Remember, you all start the same way. You go press, welcome, lift. Press, welcome, lift. Press, welcome, lift. Press, Welcome, lift. And let's sing Winter Goodbye. All right, how about we do it this way? You guys know the song pretty well, right? I think so. If I go, boom, winter goodbye, and you sing the next phrase. If I go, winter goodbye, and you go, blue is the sky. You can stay around this place. Groundhog has shown his face. Winter goodbye, blue is the sky. That's how we're gonna do it, all right? But I won't sing your part. And we will conduct. We'll go one, two, three. See if you can do that at the same time. I start, I sing one phrase, and you sing the next one. You ready? 
So get this going. One to go, winter goodbye. You can't stay round this place. Winter goodbye. Let's reverse it. You start and I answer you. The same pitch, okay? So get your pitch ready. One, two, go. Blue is the sky. Groundhog has shown his face. Blue is the sky. And hopefully that worked for you. All right. So now, next thing we're going to talk about is solfege, right? And we're learning about solfege. Do, re, mi, and all that, right? But you know what? Before you can learn solfege, you have to be a person that knows how to sing in tune, knows how to match the pitch. It's kind of stuff that we've been doing right now, right? Being able to sing a song. Then you're ready. Actually, there's one more thing. You have to know the difference between a high pitch and a low pitch. Remember my little tone bells here? All right, let's see. Here it is. Okay, so here's my low sound. Hopefully you can hear that, right? And as I'm climbing up, And I'm playing up the scales. This would be like, like all the white keys on the piano, right? Notice no black keys. And this is my low pitch, and this is my high pitch. When you were in kindergarten, we sang Ring Around the Roses, verse one and verse two, and you kind of learned it. Remember how it went? It went like this. If you want to, stand up, okay? And you can stand up and keep the beat. And when you fall down, remember how you have to fall down and squat, we all fall down. You're like this. In the second part, you're like squatting down. We all jump up. Okay, so here comes the first part. Keeping the beat. Ring around the roses, pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Here comes the second part. You are keeping the beat, beat. You kind of like get bouncing. The birds are in the meadow, sitting in a rose cup. One, two, three, and we all jump up. In my head voice, high sound, right? And you have to know the difference. So let me play one of the endings. Which one is this? Let's see if I'm still in tune. Okay, we'll do it here. Okay, that will be okay. Here we go. One. All right, which one is this one? What ending is it, right? You have to show me, like, or end it with the high pitch, high sound, or end it with the low pitch. Here's the first one. Your answer? Low pitch. I'll do that one again. We all fall down. How about this one? Your answer? It was the high pitch. That's right. We all jump up. Okay, how about this one? High pitch. How about this one? Low pitch. I have to do it fast. High pitch. High pitch. Low pitch. You have to know it right away. It's almost like not thinking about it. You just do it right away. All right? Because if you know, then you're ready for solfege. And here's the whole scale again. Let me show it to you, because you probably know this already. Do, right, number song. We start with do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re, mi. It continues on, right? As long as you can sing it. I can start with the high pitch and goes down. Do, ti, la, 
This would be like all the white keys on the piano, just like that. It'd be the same as this one. Mm -hmm. Right? We've been talking about the piano keyboard and showing it to you, right? So if I did it with this one, this one is kind of showing you, you know, right here. It goes, do, re, mi. But I'm showing you all the notes that we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then it starts all over again. We talked about that before, remember? We said how music works. There's really only 12 sounds and then it repeats over and over again. Now out of the 12, most of the time we use seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the next one that you hear is number one again, right? And here, when I go from one sound to the very next one, one dot to the next dot, right? It's called the half step. These are all half steps going from one to the next, right? But if I skip one, it's called the whole step. And the scale has a pattern of whole steps and half steps that eventually you're gonna memorize. You're gonna go, do, re, whole step, re, mi, whole step, mi, fa, half step, fa, so. You know what? How about you sing whole step or half step? Let's see if you can do that, okay? This is kind of like third grade level for you. I'm just showing it to you because you guys are smart. Okay, so if I go, do, re, you go, Whole step. What about this one? Re, mi. That's a whole step. Mi, fa. That's a half step. Fa, so. Whole step. So, la. Whole step. La, ti. Whole step. Ti, do. Half step. You know what? Let's do our song, Do a Deer. Yeah, I'll show you the things. You remember this one? comes from the sound of music and I'll show you it again. So go, do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun, me a name I call myself, far a long, long way to run. So a needle pulling thread, la, a note to follow, so tea, a drink with jam and bread that will bring us back to dough. Let's see if we're still in tune. Boom, boom. Yeah, pretty close. All right. Now, so when we learn soulfish, right, the first two that we started off with was. So in me, and we learned all that. Then we had so in la, right? And all the different intervals. So me do. Now in second grade, we added re. All right, so here we go. Let's do that. On your whiteboard, I'm just gonna write the three sounds. Do, dot, re, dot. Me. And I put the dot in there just so you know that it's a whole step away. That means there's a there's another note in between. But for us, we'll just think do, re, that's a step. Re, me, that's a step. Okay? So, what's our songs? Well, the first song that we did was this one. What's the name of the song? It went do, do, me, me, do, do, me. Do, do, me, me, do, me. Name of the song. That's right, Closet Key. So that song starts with do, do, and then skips to me. Me, me, for the first phrase. I have lost the closet key in some lady's garden. And the second phrase starts the same way, but has a different ending. 
I have lost the closet key. Can you figure this out? In some lady's garden. Did you sing this? In some lady's garden. It did Ray in there, right? And this is the hand sign for Ray. Ray do in some lady's garden. So you should be able to sing that whole song. All right, let's do it together. Ready? And uh, I'll sing a part and you sing the next part. I'll sing four beats. You sing the next four beats. So I'll go, I have lost the closet key. Because this is my beat. I have lost the closet key. And you're going to go answer me, all right? Okay? And you're the one that gets to sing. The Ray. Ready? Here I go. I have lost the closet key. I have lost the closet key. Now we'll switch. We'll sing the song where you get to start and sing four beats and I will answer you and I get to sing the Ray. But you keep on doing the hand signs. Here's Do, Ready, Go. In some lady's garden. In some lady's garden. Good job. Let's do another song. Remember the one called Hot Cross Buns? Let's do this one a little higher. Bum. Same three sounds. Do, re, mi, mi, re, do. Okay, what does it start with when I go Hot Cross Buns? Yeah, you should be able to sing it back with solfege. Did you sing this? Mi, re, do. Here's the next part. Hot cross buns. Same thing, right? Mi, re, do. How about this one? One a penny, two a penny. This one's harder. Did it start with me? No, I went. One a penny. That was all the same pitch. Look at one a penny. That was all dough. One a penny, two a penny. So that's the beetle part, right? One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. You got the whole song. You have hot cross buns. You can do it again. Hot cross buns. You stay there. One a penny, two a penny. Hot cross buns. Let's sing it again. And let's start right here. Because music is relative. I can sing it on any pitch. Right? And you're going to sing it for me, okay? And sing it with solfege. So ready? Ready, go. Here's your pitch. Start right there, okay? All right, let's do it again. How about we do it this way? I sing one line, you sing the next one. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. Here I go, hot cross buns. One a penny, two a penny. Switch, you start. A little higher now, okay? Here's your pitch. One, two, ready, go. Hot cross buns. Hot cross buns. All right. Now, that'll be it for the soulfish for right now, okay? So what we're gonna do is, we've been talking about the keyboard, right? 
and hopefully you have a keyboard at home or you can use the virtual keyboard and start learning the names of the notes and knowing what a half step and whole step is, right? But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show you how to draw a keyboard, okay? We won't draw the whole thing, because a keyboard, if you notice the keyboard here, it has white keys, like the little buttons that you push, it makes the sounds, right? It has black keys, same thing with those, right? And the black keys have a pattern. You notice that there's two black keys, a little space, three black keys, space, two black keys, space, three black keys, two black keys. Now, all the white keys are named after the first seven letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then after G comes A again. You see how here's G and then comes A. When I go this way, I'm getting higher and higher in pitch, all right? So, just so you know, boom, 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 here's my C, then comes D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And the way the keyboard is laid out, it's laid out in the key of C major. And the way you find, you have to find C, is like one of the first notes that you learn. You find the two black keys, and you go to your right, Actually, it's your left. You go to your left. And that white key will always be C. So here's C. Mm -hmm. There's three black keys, and here's two black keys. Here's C. Oh. Three black keys, here's two black keys, so this will be C. And once you know where C is, they go in order. C, D, E, F, G. After G comes A. A, B, C. Notice that? All right. Now, we were talking about in class about we only really have 12 sounds and it repeats. And we went like this. This is number one. This is the next sound. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we're back to C. Okay? And we'll learn the names of these notes, how to find. This is some kind called a C sharp. Here's D, a D sharp, an E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and C. So what that means, if you want to find C sharp, here's C, C sharp means it's right here. This is where you're gonna play a C sharp. And a sharp looks like a hashtag like this, C sharp. Uh, if you want to find a note that has a sharp on it, and you know what the regular note is, like the regular natural note, like here's C, and you go, like, where's C sharp? You go up a half step, and there's C sharp. If you know where D is, and you go, where's D sharp? You go up a half step, and there's D sharp. And here's E. Somebody said, is there an E sharp? Well, it'll be this white key, you can play that one. And here's F, F sharp is right here. G, G sharp is right here. A, A sharp is right here. Here's B. B sharp is this white key, so you know. Now, going down, we call them flats. And flats looks like a little B like this. A little B like that, a flat. And that means go down a half step. So for instance, if I go down, let's say here's C, and here's B, and I wanna find a B flat, it goes right here, here's B flat, All right? It's the same place where you play an A sharp. So okay, just so you know, here's C, B, B flat, A, a flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C. Is there a C flat? Well, you just go down a half step. Sometimes um, you can play the same white key or same black key for different notes. You'll learn about that as we go along. All right, let's practice. I'm gonna show you how to draw a keyboard so get your whiteboard out. And what we're gonna do is just do a little portion of it for today. Okay, we'll do where the two black keys are. So what you start off with, let's go right in the middle and draw like this. All right, it's one black key. And next to it, draw another one like this. Okay, you got that? All right. Next, in the middle of each one, you're gonna draw a line going down from the middle like that. Here's one. Do the same thing on the other side. Good job. Now, these are black keys, so I will quick shade them. That means just quickly, 
Don't take too much time getting down the black, black keys. Now, I need to add some more lines on both sides, but these lines have to be equal in distance. So you see this line right here from here to here? I wanna try to get the same one and go up like this all the way to the top. Try that, do that. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Same distance right here, I go all the way up. Okay, now connect the dot, connect them on the bottom and try to connect them on top if you can. If you have to, you can raise some of it to make it look nice. Hey, I just made a portion of the piano keyboard. It's the one with the two black keys. This is the part I just drew. And we're gonna draw right down where C is. Because we know C is by the two black keys. Here's C. And then after C, D. D is in the middle of the two black keys. And here comes E. And you can learn these, the names of these three white keys. Now, if you're gonna play half steps, let me show you how it works. Let's say here's one sound, and the next sound is this black key, that's a half step. Next sound is this one here, that's a half step. Next sound is right here, and this is right here. If I ask you to play half steps, you go C, C sharp, or white key to black key, black key to white key, white key to black key, black key to white key, because those are the ones that are closest together. C to D, whole step because it's a half step and a half step. D to E, whole step because it's a half step and half step. And if you don't understand half steps and whole steps, don't worry about it, you will one day, okay? So that's it, that's how you're gonna do it. Now, I'm gonna erase it and show you that you can do this very quickly, all right? Very quickly, you can go like this. Draw a whole uh, black key and a black key. I put my lines on down like that. I do a quick shade. Oh, I want equal value go up, equal value go up. And then I draw my lines across. There's my keyboard. This is C, because it's by the two black keys. This one's called D, this one's called E. Mm -hmm. C to black key, half step, half step, half step, half step. I just want to show you that. All right, well, it's almost time to finish up here. I think I'm going to end with the goodbye song. I like this song, and I think you guys like it too. It is a echo song. The one that goes, see you later, alligator. So here I go. My turn. Make sure you put your cap back on, okay? So it doesn't dry up. See you later, alligator. See ya soon, macaroon. See ya later, mashed potato. Oh, yes, soon. I think I sang the wrong way, huh? Let me do it again. Here we go. See ya later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Mashed potato, see ya soon, macaroon. Say goodbye, pumpkin pie, to the loo, kangaroo. Catch you later, operator, adios, cinnamon toast. it we made it everybody all right this was our makeup for the holiday that we didn't have together all right everybody take care and i will see you next time everybody goodbye